This is Fessel Khan for Lights Out in association with Shamrock Boxing. Delighted to be joined by the beast from the east. Beast from the east! Mr. Anthony Yard. Anthony, how you doing? Lions in the camp! <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, man. How are you? I'm very well, thank you for asking. Lovely, nice, sunny day here in London. Oh, it's beautiful. Got the same tracks with the hours were yesterday. Oh, yeah, come on. You know this, <laughs> <it>. Adidas. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to speak to you since obviously August of Russia. Yes. First of all, congratulations on what was a fantastic performance. Thank you. Against Sergei Kovalev, a great fight. Yeah. Talk to me about the experience of you being out there in Russia with a, a, well, a former world champion against Sergei Kovalev and an experienced fight for a world title. What was that like for you? Nothing short of amazing. Um, life changing. Some boxers won't admit it, but it's every boxer's dream to to fight on a stage like that. Um, hopefully win it, but again, it don't always go your way. You know, there's only two people in the ring. One will win, one will lose, or you will draw. Um, I said it before the fight, I wasn't going to go out there and look for no points decision. I don't think it was going to go my way if that happened. Being in Russia, and he's Russian, you know, it was his promotion. He had the fight already set up to fight Canelo after which was his biggest payday yet, <laughs> massive money fight. And um, I knew I only had one way of going out there and winning. And I just saw it as big risk, big reward. If I pulled that off, man, that would have been in the history books for forever. Um, someone to only have 12 amateur fights. Again, I want to talk about this as well. The heart and guts it took to even go out there, or to take that fight. Um, you know you lack in it. I knew I lacked an experience. Um, I knew who Kovalev was, how dangerous of an opponent he was. To go out to Russia and to fight him in his own backyard, it wasn't me going to America or me going to, you know... Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia or another country which is mutual. You know, I'm not from there, he's not from there. I went to his backyard, I went to Russia. I don't go to Moscow in Russia. <laughs> I went to Chelyabinsk. And again, when we got there, people were people in Russia were saying this is the toughest place in Russia. When we got there, when we got there, um, there was people that wasn't from there that were scared, saying I don't like being here. Like I'm I'm here working, but this is a, a serious place in Russia. You know, the crime rate is very high. Um, so we had bodyguards with guns. <laughs> All these things here, people can't fathom like what what it was. Um, people can't fathom how serious it was. But again, one thing that did surprise me was the Russians were lovely. The boxing fans in Russia are genuine boxing fans. You think you got better treatment than oh, you did? Oh my God, listen, <laughs> I was so surprised. They loved me out there. They love me out there. People after the fight, they, they love a person that's got heart. They love a person that get, puts on a fight. People were trying to, people were, there was, a, there was two guys fighting with security guards to take a picture of me. Cause they're saying, you're gonna be a champion. You have heart, you have heart, you're tough. People in the gut, people, a lot of people didn't expect for me to go out there and put on a performance like that. Cause they hadn't seen it. You know, it's all good f f fun and games talking, but sometimes you need to see it. And, um, a lot of people were surprised. Um, some people thought I could have done it. I thought I could have done it. Um, it was a big ask, it was a big task, but it's boxing, it happens. I believe it was the, the eighth round yeah. where you were seconds away from stopping <laughs> Sergei Kovalev. Yeah. You know, I look back on that fight and obviously took part in social media during fight week and after the fight. Do you, do you believe that you got the credit that you deserve for the performance and the effort you gave in that fight? Um, yes and no. Um, it's boxing at the end of the day and I don't look for recognition, you know. I don't feel like I don't know. I feel like that's a that's a wrong way to go. If you ever look, if you're looking for recognition, you will. It's a high percentage you will find yourself very disappointed. It's almost certain you will find yourself very disappointed. Um, there's always going to be critics. Always, someone like Floyd Mayover, someone like Roy Jones Jr., someone like Matt Tyson in his prime. Someone like Muhammad Ali in his prime. When all these guys were active, they never got their recognition. There was always, oh, who's he going to fight next? Oh, this person will beat him. Oh, he didn't fight nobody. Oh, he's not fighting nobody. Oh, that's not the right opponent for him. Everyone's got their opinions. But then when they retire, 
Some of them still don't get recognition mm -hmm. that they should. Floyd's retired now, he still don't get the recognition he, he, what he should deserve, realistically. But now Matt Tyson's an older man. Now Muhammad Ali, rest in peace. The great Muhammad Ali has left us. That's when everyone gives him the recognition. And um, if you spend your life whilst you're on planet Earth looking for recognition, you might find yourself unsuck and end up in you know depression, find yourself upset. Because you can't, you're not in control of what people think, what people say, um, or how people treat you. You move forward now, you've taken that experience, but what's that experience going to do for you going forward into the rest of your career? Um, we won't know, we have to wait and see. Um, I know what, what it's done to me internally, but um, it's all, that's all fun and games and it's okay saying it, but I've got to go out there and produce, just like I have been, just like I've done up until this point. Um, I still feel like there's more and it's like I grip my teeth when I say more because sometimes I get excited. Boxing is a very hard sport but it's a sport I love. I love, you know, entertaining the fans. Um, I love, you know, the atmosphere. I love, I love challenging myself and the challenge is doing, going to Russia. <laughs> the challenge is going and fighting in an arena full of loads of people. The challenge is fighting on camera with a, a camera in your face. The challenge is dissecting any nerves, dissecting any disbelief, that just being a challenge in your, your goals. That's, that's what the thing that I thrive on. And that's something that 99% of people on planet Earth don't do. They don't do what they really want to do. They do what's comfortable and what's safe. And um, the fact I'm one of them people that's going for what I want, and that's defying the odds. Having 12 amateur fights and having the experience I've got in boxing, it was almost against logic that I got to the stage I got to so quickly, within, within four years. But if I didn't have a belief system in my own mind, that would have never happened. Do you get what I'm saying? So, I'm just one of the people trying to motivate. You can do anything you want to do, man. Just put your mind to it. April 11th, O2 yes. Arena. Anthony Yard versus the undefeated Lyndon Arthur, 16 and 0. A proper, true British 50 50 fight. When it got announced the other day, I, I was even jumping up and yeah? down because it's Come a fight on. I'm really looking forward to seeing. Um, Lyndon's been chasing the fight for quite a while now. What was your initial feeling when it was made and announced the other day? Well, you know what? It was made under my radar. <laughs> of course, <laughs> you know, nothing can get made without my say so. So when it got put to me, there was a bit of negotiation that had to happen. When everything got agreed, I was like, hey, I started doing this. <laughs> you know when Dr. Doodle wear the beaver? <laughs> the beaver goes, this is good news. <laughs> the beaver likes good news. That's, that's, that was my reaction. Um, it's boxing at the end of the day. We, we want to have these exciting fights. We want to put on shows um, for the fans. And yeah, man, I'm happy, man. It's, this, this is what it is. What do you make of Lyndon Arthur as a, as a professional boxer? What have you made of him in his career so far? What type of a fight do you think he brings to you on April the 11th? I don't know. And that's just me being honest. I'm sure he's studied me to the T because he's been calling me out for a minute. Like he's meant to. When someone's doing um, when someone's doing a bit more than you or they got a bigger name than you or whatever, of course you're meant to go after that. I've always been different. I've always, I'm my own person. I'm, I've, I, I, I see and I do things completely different. I've always been like this. I've never looked at anybody else. I've never looked at anybody and called them on that. When I turned pro, I never called out the person who was British champion. I never called out the biggest name in, in, in British boxing. I never called out the biggest, even at this stage now, you haven't heard me call out nobody because if I do my job, here comes all the attraction. Everything just comes towards you, things happen, things fall into place. So, um, Lyndon called me out, I saw little clips. He was meant to do that. That's, that's, the, um, that's the nature of boxing. It wasn't long ago, um, I, was, I was actually in the same place as Lyndon Arthur. We were, we were chatting. Um, him and Zelfa Barrett are very close. And um, I was in the same um, place. I went to Manchester, I was in, we was in the same place. We was basically together for like half the night. Um, so there's, there's no real animosity there. He just wants something in life. I want something in life. And that's just the business of boxing. So we, when we, we talk, you, you mentioned that you know, a lot, not a lot of people would take the steps that you've taken i.e. going over to Russia, taking on a great fight like Sergei Kovlev. Another fight that was rumoured on Twitter was yourself versus Canelo Alvarez. Woo! We all know May 2nd he's pencilled in to fight 
rumoured to be Billy Joe Saunders. But if that fight was offered to you, would you take that in a heartbeat? Would you have to think, do you know what? I'm kind of on my own path right now. I need to take on these type of fights. And maybe one day the fight with Canelo Alvarez will be something to look at. There's no thinking. There's no thinking. It will be the biggest payday um, I've had to date. Um, it will be against the, you know, on paper, top two, pound for pound in the world. Why would I not take that fight? <laughs> Why would I not take the fight? Like, this is what I'm saying. A lot of people criticize me saying, oh, Anthony's not fighting already. Those people, those people saying things so absurd. Those people saying profound, to me it's profanity. Anthony's scared to fight this person. Anthony's scared. Are you mad? <laughs> are you mad? Like, are you, are you listening to what you're you saying? You can't be that scared if you're going all the way to Russia. I went to, to Russia to fight, to fight. You get what I'm saying? But it has to make sense. I'm not going to fight someone for no reason. If, if that's the case, we might as well get a cracking in that corner. Do you get <laughs> what I'm saying? But this is a this is a business of boxing. And um, growing up, yeah, if someone mentioned said my name about something, I'd be like, you approach them, what's going on? Like, you, you might have a little scrap, you might hit touch them first and they fall on the floor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It might go that way, it might not, but we're in the business of boxing. I'm not just going to fight someone because everyone sent me to fight them. What? That don't make no sense. Do you get what I'm saying? It has to make sense. Business-wise, it has to make sense for your career. So many things, but don't ever, are you mad? Anthony's scared of this person. Someone that's got two fists just like me, and my fists are better. You're mad. <laughs> You're mad. Give me a prediction for April the 11th, at the Yard versus Lyndon Arthur, the O2 Arena. The prediction is, make sure you tune in and watch the fight. <laughs> End the story. you got A.Y., the beast, against Lyndon Arthur. Um, he's still undefeated. Um, Again, I'm going to tell you this from now. He's undefeated until until 11th of April. Um, I'm very confident in that. Again, um, my only defeat was me taking a massive risk and fighting Kovalev in Russia. Um, you're going to see an exciting fight, an exciting build-up. Um, you know, you got we're both heavy hitters. That's for damn sure. That's 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 factual. We're both heavy hitters. Both got fantastic knockout ratios. Um, so I've heard of him. Um, but I'm, I'm almost 100% certain I hit harder. It, it, it's evident in the, um, in the outcome of the fights. And Yard, always a pleasure. Yes. Thank you very much for your time. We're, lo we're looking forward to this one. Looking forward Thank to the press conference. And um, hopefully we'll catch up with you during fight week. Come on, land's Thank in the camp. Thank you for talking mm -hmm. to Lights Out. Come on.